thank him uh, for the privilege we back together uh, and uh, praise him for his uh, wonderful presence uh, on uh, uh, on Sunday uh, and uh, thank you so much for uh, being here and what a blessing you are to uh, uh, to us and to our family uh, and uh, thank you for the wonderful gifts and uh, all the uh, all, all the cards and uh, what a what a blessing it is I, I want to tell all of you I love you and thank you uh, so much uh, for Pastor Appreciation Day on Sunday what a wonderful uh, blessing and uh, we just want to give God praise for his blessing so we want to welcome you tonight uh, that are joining us live so thank you uh, for being here tonight and we want to praise God uh, for his word uh, and everybody that's joining us by radio or outside uh, in the parking lot thank you so much for being here tonight and we just want to give God praise I do want to make one announcement a change uh, to uh, uh, to our schedule and that is for tomorrow uh, our uh, senior uh, stars uh, supper that was going to happen tomorrow uh, has been postponed uh, we'll reschedule that so please uh, let everyone know uh, and uh, we did that because of the uh, uh, the weather that is coming in uh, so uh, please remember that and uh, ask the Lord's blessing on it and then talking about that please pray uh, for everyone that is uh, dealing with the uh, uh, with the storm that's coming through uh, that God will just touch them protect them uh, bless those who are going there to work uh, uh, Lord just lift them up and just meet their needs I'm glad today to know that we can trust the Lord amen uh, that there's nothing absolutely nothing that God uh, cannot do and uh, we want to praise him and thank him for it uh, and give God praise for all of his blessings so also uh, today is the last day to sign up uh, for our uh, our training on Sunday uh, which will happen right after service on Sunday morning uh, we'll have our Sunday morning service uh, and then uh, after that we'll have a, a meal uh, and then we're going to do a, a training for anybody all of our Sunday school teachers all of our if you'd like to lead a small group or a Bible study uh, uh, in any way, or if you think you might, or you know somebody that might, you might need to even talk to, it'll help you out. Uh, and uh, so please uh, go on our app and sign up or sign up on our Welcome Center. Uh, so thank you so much for doing that. Uh, and then uh, also a reminder of this Saturday, uh, I'll be doing our food pantry and clothes closet. Uh, that'll be at, uh, begin at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Uh, so please pray for that and thank God for that opportunity uh, that we have uh, to be able to do that. So uh, please pray uh, tonight for our youth as they meet together. Uh, pray for our Bible studies that are going on tonight, that God will bless them. Uh, and Lord, just help us as we grow together uh, in the grace of the Lord. Uh, and just ask God's will to be done. So uh, we thank Him and praise Him uh, for all of His blessings tonight. Uh, please pray for all those in our community, uh, all of the uh, COVID spread that is going on. Uh, please pray uh, for those who are sick, that God will lift them up and just meet their needs. Uh, the Lord just encourage them uh, and as we as a church continue to go forward uh, Lord willing uh, we want to uh, make sure everybody understands to practice uh, social distancing and uh, and we recommend a mask if that is uh, w what you need to do so please uh, remember that uh, and uh, uh, so that we can try to be safe as possible and still join together in worship and honor the Lord uh, so we want to give God thanksgiving as we pray tonight uh, let's also remember Adam waters and prayers in the hospital hospital uh, in Asheville continue to remember him that God will touch him uh, and just lift him up uh, and uh, I praise the Lord that we can rely upon the Lord and know uh, that God knows exactly what we need even before we ask aren't you glad you can pray and trust the Lord if you are would you say amen Amen. Let's pray for all those tonight unable to be here, that God will just touch them uh, and lift them up. I'll ask you to go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter number 20 uh, tonight, Acts chapter number 20, uh, before we pray. Uh, and as we pray tonight, let's continue to pray for our nation. Uh, we are uh, headed for a uh, decision on November the 3rd, uh, uh, so please pray for all uh, the uh, candidates, everything that needs to happen, uh, that God will just touch us with his mercy and his grace. Uh, uh, and uh, so please pray for that uh, and then uh, pray also uh, for all of our local leaders. I know we're having a, uh, like I said, a, an upswing of COVID cases. So uh, please pray for all those who are making decisions in our own county uh, that God will just help them and lift them up. Uh, and as we uh, pray together, pray for all of our doctors, our nurses, uh, those who are caring for them. And uh, I, I'm so glad tonight uh, that we can, uh, we can trust in the Lord. So this time, uh, let's just pray together. Ask God's will to be done. Father, 
Father, thank you uh, for the privilege you give us, God, to be able to call upon your name. God, you are so good, and we just bless your holy name, God, for your grace and your mercy, uh, God, and the privilege to pray. Uh, God, just to be able to call upon you, God, to know, uh, Lord, that you are God and you are good. And, Lord, I want to thank you uh, for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. God, thank you for your grace. Uh, God, I thank you tonight for the word of God, Lord, that your word is a lamp and a light. God, that through your word we have life. We have uh, the opportunity, God, to call upon you and to know you, God, and to be able to trust in you, Father. Lord, I want to thank you for what you're doing right now, uh, God, in and through our lives. God, thank you for the privilege to come uh, into your house, Father. Uh, God, we want to pray for those today, God, who are uh, who are suffering. We pray for those today, God, who have tested uh, positive for COVID, God, that in our, in our county, Lord, that you would touch them. And God, just bring healing, God, to their bodies. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you just bring strength, uh, God, in this hour, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that you, Lord, just bless the doctors and the scientists who are uh, searching for a cure, God. I pray, uh, Lord, you would give them wisdom. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, that would, you would uh, speak to your people, God, Lord, your children uh, that are working on these things, Lord, that you might be exalted, God, through giving them wisdom. Father, we pray, God, today, uh, Lord, for our president, our vice president, God, all of our leaders, God, uh, Lord, that you would just touch them across this country, God. Give us uh, wisdom, Lord. May you influence uh, their thoughts and their decisions by the power of the gospel of people who know you. Uh, God, I pray, Lord, that you would just put them in their path, God. Uh, Lord, we pray for leadership, uh, God, and our governor. Lord, we pray, God, for here locally, uh, God, that you would just bless these that make the decisions, God. Our, our county commissioners, Lord, also our school board. Uh, God, we pray for all of our town leaders, God, and uh, mayors, Lord, that you would bless them. Uh, Father, I pray, God, that you would give wisdom, uh, Lord, as we go forward in these days. Uh, God, I pray, Lord, that we, God, would exalt you as the church, and we would be the church, uh, God, in times of, uh, of trouble, in times of turmoil. Uh, God, that we would be shining as a light, uh, God, to those, uh, Lord, who are in need. Father, I pray, God, that you would, uh, that people would understand that there's hope in Jesus, and hallelujah Hallelujah. Uh, Lord, that you are alive and well. Uh, that you are on the throne. And God, that you know all things. And Lord, uh, God, that you're able to do all things. You're the healer. You're the great physician. And Father, we yield to you tonight and ask your will to be done. Father, we pray for our services going on, God, throughout our community. God, we pray for our Bible studies uh, that are going on tonight. God, our youth as they're meeting together. Father, we pray for our food pantry, God, on Saturday. Uh, Lord, help us to bless families, God. I pray you just meet needs, God, through that opportunity. Father, we just ask you, oh God, that you would be lifted up, Lord, that you would use us, oh God, in these days, uh, Lord, that people can know that you are the Savior of the world, that you are the King of kings, that you are the Lord of lords, and God, that you're able to do all things. Father, thank you tonight for your word. Father, I pray you would speak to us. God, we pray, uh, Lord, for Adam there in the hospital. Lord, you would lift him up. Uh, God, I pray you would encourage him and strengthen him. Uh, Lord, I pray you bring healing to his body. Father, you know every need today, uh, God, that's represented right here. I pray, God, that you would speak to us. You would lead us. You would guide us. Uh, God, for your honor and glory. Thank you for your word tonight, God. Your word is a lamp and a light. And God, if there's anybody going to get saved in our family, it's going to come from the word. And God, come from the work of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray you would use us. Speak to us. Lord, help us tonight, God, through your word. That we would grow in your grace and knowledge. Lord, we would share you with somebody else. And we give you praise for all your blessings. And thank you, Lord, for loving us, God, and giving us grace. In Jesus' wonderful and holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Amen. amen. I just praise him. I give God honor and glory for all of his blessings and thank him for the privilege tonight to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we're going to look all the way in the book of Acts chapter number 20. I know that you cannot believe this, uh, but we've been going through all the prayers of the Bible all the way from Genesis and we're already in the book of Acts. It's only been about six or seven years. Amen. But as we look tonight uh, in the book of Acts chapter number 20, there is a lot that is happening in the church. Uh, there's a lot that is happening in the body of Christ. Uh, when you walk through the doors of the book of Acts, it is a place of excitement. It is a place uh, where we're watching people come to know Jesus and uh, people to be uh, in love with Jesus and people be hungry uh, for the word and they're hungry to know what to do in their lives. Oh, that God would birth in us us as his people a hunger and a fire and a stirring like they had in the book of Acts to hear from God and to walk with God and to serve God in this day. I know, friend, I want to tell you, I know that we're living in a time of fear. 
I know we're living in a time when we, uh, we don't know what to do and we don't know where to go and we don't know what is going to happen in life. But I want to tell you in all of the fear that is going on, the greatest thing we have is hope in Jesus. And we need to be sharing that Jesus is our hope. That is what was going on in the book of Acts. They had fallen in love with Jesus so much that they wanted everybody to know Jesus. Who does everybody need to know? Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus and they need to know him. And so when you come in the book of Acts, we're walking in the middle of the ministry of the apostle Paul. Can anybody tell me what Paul's name was before he got saved? Saul, oh Saul of Tarsus, and now he has become the Apostle Paul, and his ministry is about sharing Jesus, sharing the gospel, and making disciples. Everywhere you go, there is a path that he has left, and there is a pattern in the life of the Apostle Paul. It is this. It is that people hear about Jesus, people receive Jesus, and that people begin to grow in Jesus. And so watching Paul as he walks through those avenues, the love all that comes from Paul is part of the fruit of the Spirit that the Bible talks about that has a love in his life for the gospel. He has a love for Jesus, the one he persecuted, the one that he tried to get everybody to turn away away from now. He is the one that is loving him with all of his heart. So Paul, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is walking through these places. He is sailing to them by boat, and he is giving them the word from place to place, region to region. He is sharing the word of God, and he's watching God transform lives. I want to tell you all something about 2020. The chaos of 2020 has an answer. It is the word of God. The chaos that is going on in our world today, there's an answer to it, and it is when we turn to the Word. If we are guided by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit that lives in us, God says these words, and He gives us a plain path. And we've been watching Paul as he's had a plain path, hearing from God and walking with the Lord. How about we watch something as Paul is here in Acts chapter number 20. He is at a place where he is about to depart from them for the last time, and he will not see them any longer here on earth. The next place will be in heaven. How many of you know that if you are a born-again believer, you're going to heaven one day? Amen. Amen. And so, Paul, we're watching. I want to tell you something about a believer. If you are saved by by Jesus and you have trusted in Jesus, there is no forever departure from other people who are a believer. We're going to be together forever. And it's going to be good. Amen. And so we're watching Paul as he is giving his final farewell uh, on this earth. Paul has stepped out and he's begun to establish uh, churches with the pockets of believers that he is finding. He is finding these people as we saw him uh, in, in Philippi where he found these people who are meeting by the riverside and they're just trying to figure out life. They're trying to figure out what God would have for them. And Paul meets with them and they become a church of people. They become a gathering gathering of a body and so he found them and then he led them in the word Paul's ministry has a foundation has a foundation of first of all salvation in Jesus can anybody tell me what road Paul was on when he trusted Jesus the road to Damascus. And so he ha- always goes back. Everything about Paul's ministry goes back to the place that he trusted Jesus. It was not a progressive trust. It was not something that he did at a church. It was not something that he just earned. But there was a place in his life where he met Jesus and Jesus met him and he was saved and changed forever. How many of you remember that happened in your life? Amen. 
And so he watched Paul. He had that foundation of salvation in his life. And then Paul had a foundation in his life uh, from the Holy Spirit's guidance. We watch him as God has guided him and told him no about going some places and continued to lead him, as we saw on his other missionary journeys, uh, to where he was going and needed to be. So we've watched him on that road to Damascus. He's led by three things. He's led by a salvation experience, which gives him the Holy Spirit. And then he's led by the word of God. And then the Bible lets us know he is led by prayer. If we will let those three things lead our lives, salvation, the word, and prayer, we'll be at a place like Paul where we can minister to others. There's times that Paul was ministering to people and he would be at one-on-one with them. There's other times he was ministering to people as he stood before Caesar. Uh, Just as an example, he was ministering to Caesar and thousands and thousands was hearing what was going on. Friend, I want to tell you today, God wants to use us in other people's lives. So keep in that ministry of our salvation, of the word, and of prayer. And so we're watching Paul do that. I want you to look now in verse number 36 of Acts chapter number 20. This whole entire chapter leads up to this verse of Scripture. And it's amazing what God is doing in lives. Look in verse number 36. The Bible said, and when he had thus spoken, what did he do? He spoke. He's telling them. The Bible said then he kneeled down and prayed with them all. Did you know the greatest thing we have in our life is the ability to pray? Do you know you can pray with people over the phone? Do you know you can pray with people every anywhere that you are? Now you just pray with them from six feet away. Amen. You can pray with people anywhere you are. There is no condition in prayer other than a clean heart. And so we're watching Paul as God is speaking through him and to him. So tonight we're going to look at a prayer of commitment. It was a place that God had knitted their heart together and Paul is committing everything that he is going forward to unto God, everything that has happened to God and these people that are with him, he is committing them to the Lord. I want you to back up with me all the way to verse number one and from verse number one down to verse number six, we find out something about the apostle Paul. I love this about him. Look at verse number one. The Bible says in verse number one, he said, and after the uproar was ceased, you can understand something about Paul. Everywhere he went, the Holy Spirit used the apostle Paul for people to learn about Jesus and to come to know Jesus and to grow in Jesus. But every single place he went was also met with opposition. Can I let you know something today? Listen, if you don't already know it and you have not already experienced it, when you begin to live for Jesus, there's going to be opposition. Paul has experienced that in more than one place. As a matter of fact, he's been beaten. He's been beaten with many stripes. He's been put in jail. He is, we, we've watched all these kind of things that have taken place in the ministry of Paul already. But the Bible says here in verse number 1, I love it. He said, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them. That's how you know it was not 2020. I'll get that in a minute. He embraced them and then he departed for to go into Macedonia. I want to ask you a, I want to ask you a Bible question. Has Paul been to Macedonia before? Yes, he went last week. Was y'all on that journey? Amen. And so now this is the third missionary journey. If you are uh, understanding what Paul is doing, this is a third missionary journey that Paul is about to embark on. He is going 
back to Macedonia. Why does Paul continue to go back uh, to these places? He is going back for a purpose. He is going back to take them the word. He is going back to teach those uh, that have become uh, born-again believers and to give them uh, what they need in their lives so they can grow as a believer. And so the Bible says here is before he departs, he is accompanied uh, with these disciples, with these believers. There is one thing we must remember as we journey for Jesus. We are called to be laborers together. Do you know we can't do it on our own? We are not called to do it on our own. In our lives, God calls us together, and we watch them doing that. In verse number 1, Paul, he never did anything by himself. He understood something. He needs uh, that God puts people in our lives so that together uh, we can do uh, together what God has given us uh, and be in that unity. Unity brings ultimate results. Unity in Christ brings results in our life, and that's what Paul is experiencing. He's experiencing, here are disciples. Where did these disciples come from? They come from Paul's ministry of sharing Jesus and teaching them of the word. The Bible says he embraced them. And so in verse number one, you understand he is accompanied. Verse number one lets us know they were together. Y'all remember what happened in the book of Acts chapter number two. The Bible said that they're in one place and they're with one. Anybody know what they had? One accord. And so they're in unity. It wasn't that every one of them had the same lifestyle. It wasn't that every single one of them thought the same. They were all different people. Uh, But I want to tell you they have one accord. And that one accord was this. We want people to know Jesus. And we want to teach them about Jesus. And we want everybody to know that there's a Savior in the world that can change their life forever. And so Paul in this togetherness. He is leaving for this third missionary journey. He calls. Those disciples, y'all know what a a disciple is this. A disciple is a student of the word that is teaching somebody else what they have learned. And so we're watching Paul as he takes these who are his disciples and he embraces them. There is something noticeable about what Paul is doing. You know what the word says, and it says it more than one time, but a scripture that steps out uh, 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 to me is 1 John, uh, chapter number 3 and verse number 14, where he said, I want you to know, you you know that you have passed from death unto life. You know that Jesus is your Savior when you love the brethren. God has said, I want to tell you there's something special about my family. And that is this, that when we know Jesus, he puts a love in our life for one another that surpasses anything that the world can know anything about. So he said, we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. But in verse number one, it tells us something about the apostle Paul. Then he departed to go to Macedonia. He didn't just stay where he was. They were He, he was establishing these to carry on the ministry everywhere that he went. Then the Bible says in verse, in verse number 2 and 3, and I'm not going to take time uh, to read all of these scriptures, but in verse number 2 and 3, we understand something about what Paul is doing. Uh, the Bible said in verse number 2, he said, and when he had gone over these parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece and there abode three months. Now, I want to tell you something about the gospel. I want to tell you something about God. God is not in a hurry. When I think about Paul, he had his eyes set on Macedonia. Paul is here, and he's going back to Macedonia. But he stops in this place for three months. There's a reason he's here for three months. As you watch him in Greece, and the Bible says there in verse number three that he is abiding there for three months. And we understand what Paul is doing for those three months. He's not just sitting still. He's not just quit. He's not just stopping. He's not, on, he's not, he's not just on vacation. Paul is here. He is teaching them. He is leading them as he goes. And so we watch him for three months. I want to tell you something about people. We are slow learners. When it comes to spiritual 
things. We need to know what God has said, and we need to know it well enough that when we are telling someone or we are stepping out or when an attack comes from the enemy, we are grounded in the Word. And so here's what Paul does. Paul takes three months on this journey and pours into these people. Discipleship takes Time. It does not mean that we don't serve while we are learning. It does not mean that we stop everything we're doing and that is all we do is learn. But it means that we dig and we sit, get in the Word and let the Word get into us. Never hurry growth. Now we think about growth. How, I, I mean, I think about whenever you plant a tree. If you're going to plant an apple tree, it will be great if you planted it one day and the next day you went out and picked a bushel of apples. Would that not be great? Amen. But we know when you hurry stuff up to grow, it messes stuff up. Right? I mean, they can take a chicken, they can hatch it one day, and the next day, man, it's at McDonald's as a nugget. We having some problems out of that in our world. But when we look at what Paul did, discipleship takes time. How many times does the Lord tell us in his word to be patient? How many times does he let us know after, after Pentecost that the Holy Spirit, one of the part of the fruit of the Spirit is patience? It is helping people to learn and to know and to grow. Oh, not to just to cut people off, not just to turn them away, but help them to grow in the Lord. And that is what Paul is doing in these three months. He is growing them. When you come to verse number four, there's an outcome of these three months. Now, what God has done in verse number four is he brings a whole band of people to accompany him along the journey. So he spent three months pouring into people and now... Now as he's poured into these people, Paul himself has now grown into more people. And I love verse number 4 because what verse number 4 does is shows us all the diversity in the life of Paul. All of these people that God brought together with Paul to go and to serve. It was people that may, may not have ever been chosen in any other realm, but God chose them to be with Paul. And I'm going to tell you as we grow, God puts people people in our lives. Paul has more going with him because of the three months he has settled and just taught and discipled people. Oh, listen, disciples making disciples. There is a diverse group that with the same message. I want to tell you something what Jesus, the disciples looked at people you got to understand what Jesus does with us about discipleship. He let his own disciples see that these people over here are casting out demons in the name of Jesus. His disciples said, uh, Lord, I just want to tell you something. There's some people over there that speak in your name, and they're, they're casting out devils in your name. But you know something? They didn't come check with us to see if that was okay. Jesus said, they are mine. They might not look like you. They may not even talk the same language you talk, but they are my people. He said, let them alone. Let them grow. And so what God does with, with Paul is he, he brings all these different people together, and he says, I want you to know there's a journey that we are going on, and it's about Christ. It's about knowing him. It's about working together in the unity of the Spirit. I know today, friend, we are living in probably the most diverse time. I am 52 years old. I, and we are living in a time when our media is saying we are, we are having the most diversity uh, and, a, and a split of people and disunity that we have ever had uh, as a nation. I want to tell you why. Are you all ready for this? There's a reason why. Because the Bible says when you and I do not know Christ and do not follow Christ, that we will have that division because light and darkness cannot walk together. 
And so God gives us the remedy, and that is to come to the light, trust him, and God puts our heart together just like he did with these in verse number four. But when you come to verse number five and six, you understand now they have traveled to Troas, and they're waiting on Paul. Paul sent them ahead, and then the Bible says that Paul, here comes Paul, out of where they are, and he joins them out there in Troas. So this is the third missionary journey of Paul. So God brought them together to serve, to witness, and to grow. And together they will be more effective for Christ. Then I want you to look with me in verse. No, I want you to look with me in verse number nine. The Bible says so. So we understand he was accompanied. They came together, but in verse number nine, the Bible tells us, and, and there sat a, a, in a window a certain young man by the name of Eutychus, uh, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching. He sank down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. That was a long service. When you think about Paul, the Bible says here that there was, when we look at these verses of Scripture from verse 7 down through verse number 12, we understand something that Paul was accompanied, but then there was a lie. What has happened is Paul has hooked in uh, to these people in verse number 7. Uh, the Bible says here, lets us know, he, he sailed away from Philippi and he's coming uh, to Troas. And then the Bible says here, he's been here for seven days. And in verse number 7, the Bible said, and upon the first day of the week. Can anybody tell me what the first day of the week is? Sunday, on the first day of the week, here's Paul. He has come together. They're meeting together in a loft in a, uh, as a church group, as a gathering. Uh, they're meeting together over the word in verse number 7. He said, and when the disciples came together to break bread. Uh, there's a couple things you can look at about breaking bread. One is they're observing the Lord's Supper. Uh, the other is they're coming together for that fellowship. And they're sitting down breaking bread like it was in Acts chapter number 2 with the church. And then the Bible says, here's what Paul does in that time. Paul preached unto them. He was ready to depart tomorrow. He is leaving out. And so he's giving them a word as he leaves. Here's something we got to understand about Paul. Paul knows he's not coming by this way anymore. And so he's giving them a word as he goes for them to hold on to. It is a word in their life that they're going to live with and live off of and to go back to for the rest of their lives that Paul said. And so Paul is giving them the word. And as he gives them the word in verse number 7, the Bible said he was ready to depart. And he continued his speech until midnight. Wow. Wow. Paul preached until midnight. While he's preaching, the Bible says here in verse number 8, and there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And so we understand what Paul is doing. Verse number 7 and 8, in this part about being alive, he's giving them the word. He is, he is making disciples. He's giving them what they need. Friend, I want to tell you, listen, we have got to get back to the place of being a disciple and making a disciple. If it's not 10 people we're teaching, if it's not 5 people we're teaching, maybe it's one person that we're leading in discipleship and being accountable with and growing in the Lord. And that's what Paul is doing. He is leading them. He is giving them the word. He's preaching the word. It is the call of the believers to hear of the word of God and come together in his word. It is how God deals with us and how he brings us to the place of growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. But then the Bible says in verse number 9 that Eutychus is in a deep sleep. The Bible said he's in a window. I never really understood this other than he's just sitting in a window. I remember growing up uh, in church and we would open the windows. Y'all remember that? Anybody? I mean, you open the window so you get some airflow going on. We did not have air condition. Y'all know? That's hard to believe for some people. I didn't even know what air condition was. Right? So the, we had the windows open. So Eutychus is sitting in the window. It is of a night. They do not have street lights in that day. I know that's a shock. 
They didn't have lights that you flip on in that day. There's lanterns that are, are burning the oil. Um, so he is, he is there. The Bible said that the lights are on. They have lights in the chamber. He's sitting in the window. There's a reason he's sitting uh, that the windows are open other than for airflow. The windows are open uh, so that they will know uh, that they don't have any kind of mischief going on in that building. That it is open for whoever can come. And so they had the windows open so that all that passed by could understand, hey, this is what is going on. It was, it was to, a, to have a clean reputation about what was happening in the building. That anybody could come and anybody could hear. So Eutychus could have been a watchman in the window as he watched for those who are after Paul or who are trying to close down the gospel. And he could have been one of those watchmen that fell asleep. You remember what Jesus says to his disciples? How three of those disciples fell asleep in the garden of where? Garden of Gethsemane. And as they fall asleep, Jesus goes to them and says, can you not watch with me just one hour? And they said, oh yeah, Lord, we're good. And he walks off and they fall right back asleep. And so Eutychus, he, he could have been a watchman in the window in, those, in, in that time. But we understand something about him. Paul preached so long he fell asleep. And the Bible said he didn't just fall asleep. He went to sleep, sleep. He went to drooling sleep. He went to that place where you could bump the pew and it wouldn't make any difference. He was in that place that you could have opened the window further. He wouldn't have known that you was, he was in, the Bible said he was in a deep sleep. So much so he just slumped down. You know, kind of like Sunday morning. Y'all know what I mean. He was completely asleep. So much so... That he fell out the window. Now let me ask y'all a question. Does that mean they were watching him sleep? Somebody had to see him fall and say, hey Paul, oh Eutychus just fell out the window. He falls asleep. He falls out the window. And the Bible said he fell three stories. Not 10 feet, but he fell at least uh, about 30 feet down. He fell out of three-story loft. So he sank down. He fell. And the Bible says that he died. Wow. How in the world could that happen? He was at church. He was listening to the word. He falls asleep. And now he died at, at, at church. And so we, we understand what is going on. Paul, the Bible said Paul was long preaching then we look and see in verse number 10 i want you to see what happens the bible said and paul went down he fell on him he is embracing him uh, and said trouble not yourselves his life is in him he has fell down dead paul comes and the bible says that as paul comes to him there is a demonstration of life can i let you know something about verse number nine we are walking among people who have fallen asleep spiritually. And we need to be the verse number 10 to them, the people that brings them life. The Bible says that Paul, he goes to him, and Paul brings life to him. And he is alive, just like Elijah did uh, to the Shunammite's son as he had laid down uh, on him, and, and he came back to life. As Jesus would touch the dead, and they lived. As Peter uh, raised up Dorcas, and uh, she lived. As Paul fell on him and embraced him, the Bible says that he lived. And so Paul, in verse number 11, he goes up, and he eats uh, again. That's like, that just lets you know he's a good Baptist preacher, amen? They eating at church, they eating after church. So verse number 11 is they have went down to Wendy's and all of them's hanging out because Paul's leaving in the morning. The Bible says how that Paul stays all night long how fellowshipping and talking to them. But in verse number 13, look at it with me. How verse number 13, the Bible says, or verse number 12 rather, he said, and they brought the young man alive. And we're not little comforted. So here's what they did. Here comes the man walking in, the young man. He is alive. And as they do, it's not just a little bit of comfort. They're having rejoicing and comforted greatly because he is alive. So guess what happens? God shows life in this time. But then the Bible says, 
from verse number 13 down through verse number 17 that there's an appointed. He said there's an appointed place and you watch Paul as he leaves and he goes and he is going to purposefully, the Bible says, that he is going toward Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost. Then the Bible says in verse number 17 that he calls for the elders at Ephesus. And so as he does in verse in verse number 17, he calls for those leaders of the church to come together. Which brings us down to this place of prayer. From verse number 18 all the way down through verse number 38, something major is happening. Paul is sharing with them for the very last time. He's given them the word that he is not going to be back again. And so he affirms some things in their life. Matter of fact, he says to them from verse number 18 down to verse number 27, he said, I want to let you know something. I have kept back nothing. I have shared everything I know. I have taught you. How the Bible says that when you go from verse number 18 on down, the Bible says, I want you to look at it in verse number 19. He said, I'm serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befall me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Paul said, I want you to know my life has even been in danger to share the gospel and to share how the word. So he is affirming to them. He is letting them know how that he has not kept back anything so they could share Jesus with them. How many times in our life do we keep back Jesus instead of sharing him with others? Paul said, life's been in danger. The Jews were after him. He said, I want to let you know all these things that are happening, but I kept back nothing. And then the Bible says, I love verse number 20. It's a, it's a picture of where we need to be as, as Christians today. He said, and I have kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and taught you publicly and from house to house. So Paul said, uh, the time that I've spent, I went from how, we went from house to house. We have shown the word. We've taught the word. We've given people what they need in life, and that is the word of God. And then he says in verse number 20, 21, look at it. He said in verse number 21, here's what he's doing. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. What does our world need to know today? That you have repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad today that the message is still the same? Amen. He said, I want you to know where we are. I want you to know how, what is going on, how that I've kept back nothing. And then we've been spirit-led. As he said in verse number 22, he said, we are, I, I've been uh, led by the Spirit of God. And then in verse number 23, he said, it's the Holy Spirit who, who is my witness in my life. But I want you to look at verse number 24. He said, but none of these things move me. Paul said, in all the things I've encountered, he said, in all the sacrifices that may have been made in my life to share Jesus, none of these is what I'm trusting in. Here's what he said in verse number 22, or 24 rather. He said, neither count I, count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. What's Paul talking about? He's talking about finishing what God has put in his life. He's talking about stepping up in his last days. He said, I want you to know I want my life to be finished, not so that this can be accomplished, but for this reason. Look in verse number 24. He said, in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul said, I want to finish for one reason. I want my course to be about one thing, and that is the grace of our Lord. That is the gospel of of Jesus, that is sharing who Jesus is. And then he said in verse number 25, he said, Now, I want you to know, and now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have, have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. So Paul is giving them a departure message. He said, I want to let you know, I'm not, you're not going to see me anymore. 
but I want you to see the grace of God. You're not going to see me anymore, but I want you to remember Jesus. You're not going to see me anymore, but I want you to know he is the Savior of the world and that Jesus is who you need to be looking at because you can see him every day, all the time. And you watch as he said, there's things in your life that should be shunned and turned away from. He said, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all of the gospel. He said, I want you to know I give you all of the word, the whole counsel, if you will, all of the gospel of the word. So we're watching Paul as he gives an affirmation of what is going on, of who he is, and there's an affirming prayer. And then the Bible says that he tells them from verse 28 down to verse number 32, he said, I want you to feed the flock. You know what he gave them? You know what he did? He gave them food so they can feed the flock. What do you feed the flock of God? The word of God. He gave them what they needed. It's not entertainment. It's not just trying to make things happen. He gave them the word. He said, now I want you to take and I want you to take the word. I want you to feed the flock. Here, You need to understand how that I am not going to be here to feed the flock anymore. I'm not going to be bringing by a truckload of food any longer. I give you the food. Right, now you take that food of the word and you feed the flock. Can I ask you something? Can you all hear me real good? If you hear me, would you say amen? Who are you feeding? Paul says to these elders, these ones who are leaders of the church, he said, now that you, uh, you are here, you are, uh, you are the ones that's been vested into, we give you the word. Uh, now I want you to take that same word. I want you to feed the flock. I want you to disciple others. Give them the word. He said, here's the reason why. When you look at these verses of Scripture, you're just like, wow, here, here's what's going on. He said, I want you to feed the flock. It is the one that God purchased with his own blood that Jesus died for on a cross they are precious to God and you are here to help them uh, to learn about about you and then he said for this I know that after my departing he said in verse number 29 shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock I want to ask you a question do you know people in your life that at one point you saw them serving God. And now they're not. This is what Paul's talking about. He's talking about people who you see, who you have fed, they have walked with God. And Paul is talking to them. He said, I want to let you know some feed the flock, take care of the flock. He said, because there's wolves that's going to come in and steal them away. Then the Bible says, as you read the word and you understand in verse number 30, he said, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. He said, I want to tell you what happens. He said, Satan comes in, wolves come in, and they want to draw people away from the word of God. Friend, you today, you may have been, you may have been what they call church hurt. You may have been in a place in your life where things just didn't turn out like you thought, where you thought you had this person or this person, and things just didn't sound right, didn't end up right, and you're like, wow, and you walk away from church, you walk away from God because of those things. Paul said, I want to let you know something. There's those on the inside that are, are just as adverse, and that Satan tries to use to keep you from following God. And so Paul said, I want you to feed the flock, give them a substance that will keep them healthy in where they are. And so Paul said, I want you to know something. Remember uh, the example that I am. And he commits to them. And he says, I want you to commit to follow through. And the Bible says in verse number 33 down to verse number 35, Paul talks about a kindred spirit. Listen to what Paul says in verse number 33. He said it like this. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Do you remember what Paul has said before already? Paul's already said and been through and experienced these things of being hungry. The Bible says he was beaten and left for dead of being alone. Paul also had experienced uh, being in the place where he had no food, no money. Paul had been in those places where it was like, wow, I'm here by myself. I, it's a place where Satan can say, hey, nobody don't love you. Nobody don't care for you. Paul had walked through those places. And Paul said, I want to tell you, I don't covet your money. I don't cover your apparel. I don't cover anything you have. I'm not here for those things. I'm here to give you the gospel. 
And, he, and the Bible says in verse, as you go on in verse number 34, he said, Yea, ye yourselves know uh, that these hands have, have ministered unto my necessities. He said, you know uh, that I, I work uh, to, to make every, uh, every need that I have. He said, to them that were with me. He said, I've tried to take care of everybody with me. And so you watch Paul as he says in verse 35, he said, I have showed you all things. How thou, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to what? And to receive, Paul said, I want you to know, I want to affirm in your life what life is about. It's about a kindred spirit. And then the Bible says he gathers them together in verse number 36. He kneels down. He begins to pray with them. If you'll remember in verse number one, he took those disciples, they embraced, they were, and God is doing the same thing. God shares his love through the apostle Paul, and Paul has a love for every single place that he goes. He kneeled down, and the Bible said he prayed with them. Then look in verse number 37, and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck, and they kissed him. You know what's going on? They understand that Paul is leaving. And that Paul's not going to be around a whole lot longer. And and, and whenever they are watching Paul, they're understanding, wow, I'm not going to see you down here anymore. But boy, I tell you, there's a better day coming. Amen. Look in verse number 38. The Bible says, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. Then the Bible said, and they accompanied him to the ship. They walked the last mile with Paul before he leaves them. And so you watch. Then they walked with him. Their walking with him was not just taking him to the ship where they would see him no more. But their walking with him was to honor what God had done in him and through him. And they began to walk with God and serve God and be faithful to God. And you watch the church at Ephesus. It begins to bloom. And God begins to grow. And God begins to use them in a mighty way all around their region. And people coming to know Jesus. It all came from the Apostle Paul. And the Bible said he took them and he kneeled down and they prayed. Prayed together. You know how to keep you together? Praying together. Oh, it'll, 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 it is a tie that binds your heart together. And so we're watching Paul as he, as he paints this beautiful picture to us of praying together. It was a prayer of commitment. Prayer. He was praying and committing them to God and committing these final steps of Paul and his final journey unto the Lord. God, I want to keep on with you. God, I don't want to burn out. Don't want to. Don't want to quit. I don't want to die out. God, I want to feed the flock. God, I want to help uh, those who need Jesus to come to know Him. And then, God, those who know You, I want to help them to grow in You. Aren't you glad tonight that God's give us that mandate? God has committed those same things to us that Paul committed to them, and that is to feed the flock of God. Take somebody, share Jesus with them. Take somebody, help them to learn who Jesus is and how to grow in Christ and how to know Christ and how to hear Christ and how to walk with Christ. And so what Paul is doing with them and said, I want you to know something. You be a watchman for your brothers. Be a watchman for those that Satan tries to steal away as a wolf pulls a sheep out. As Satan tries to pull those away, he said, be that one who watches. Feed the flock. Take somebody and begin to feed them. Let's pray together tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. God, your word is a lamp. It's a light. God, as we watch Paul bow down and begin to pray, God reminds us that what we have right now is the opportunity to bow down and to pray, to trust you together. God, as a church family, to trust you together as families, to trust you together as communities. God, to trust you together, Lord, that you would meet a need that will honor your name. God, you know, Lord, every single need in this building, every single person that is watching online tonight, God, you know every need that they have. Lord, I pray, God, that you you know every single thing that is going on around us. Help us, God, Lord, not to allow things to keep us from feeding the flock. And, Lord, keep us from being who you have called us to be. Lord, right now, God, I I pray that every person uh, under the sound of my voice, God, that knows you and, and have trusted you as Savior and Lord, 
God, that we will understand that you put people in our path and you put us in the places that we're in for a purpose. And that is to feed the flock of God, to help somebody to grow as we grow closer to you. And God, that they can take somebody and help them grow. Father, thank you for what you're doing. God, thank you today, God, for your grace, your mercy, and your love. God, we know there's people among us, God, or in our own church congregation, that the wolves of life and of the world and of Satan have pulled apart and pulled out from serving you. God, help us to help them to come to that place, God, where they're restored to you. God, we know people in our lives that have never trusted you. And God, that they have never heard the gospel. They've never trusted you as Savior and Lord of their life. And today, God, we pray with Paul. God, that we would go house to house. We would come into their presence. And God, that we use us wherever they are, God, Lord, to be a witness to them for your glory. God, thank you for what you're doing. God, thank you, God, for your grace and mercy. God, thank you for your peace right now, Father. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus. God, you would use us together. Maybe tonight while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed for just a minute, you say, preacher, tonight, tonight, I know somebody in my family or a close friend, somebody around my life tonight that used to serve the Lord, but it's like they've been pulled away and they're not serving God anymore. Would you help me pray for that person? Would you just slip your hand up? I know somebody in my life or somebody around my life. God bless your hearts. Thank you. Put your hands down. You say today, you know something, I know somebody in my life that does not know Jesus. They've never trusted Jesus, and I want to be a witness to them. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? We can pray together for that person, that God will open their eyes and their heart to come to know him. You may say tonight, you know something, I'm really not sure that I know Jesus. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm not sure I'm saved. I know Jesus in my life. Pray for me. I want to tell you, he knows God knows us. He loves us. He wants us to be saved and to trust in him. You say tonight, you know something, I'm really not where I need to be personally. So I really can't help somebody else know where they need to be. Pray for me. I want want my life to honor God. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? I I just want to be with him. I want to be where God would have me to be. God bless your hearts. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We commit to you just like Paul committed in verse number 36. God, we take this time to pray and to trust you. God, for those who don't know you, Lord, that they will trust in you. God, they will commit their life to you. They will say, yes, Lord, here I am. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've sinned against you, God. Lord, I praise you that you died on the cross for me. You was buried and you rose again. And today, Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sin and come into my life. I give you my life, Lord. And I want to walk for you and live for you. God, I want to pray with those today. God, that you would help us, Lord, that we would be right with you, God. Lord, that we might be able to disciple other people. We might be able to help somebody else to walk a walk that will honor you. God, we pray for those in our family and our friends, God, that are no longer serving you, God. Help us to be a light to them, Lord, that they can come to know you. God, come and be, be restored in that life. Father, we pray, God, for those around us who don't know you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would open their hearts and open their eyes. They would come to know you as Savior and Lord of their life. God, that they'd be born again, that they would trust in you. And God, that you, Lord, would use us as an instrument, Lord, in their life that they can see Jesus high and lifted up. Lord, help us to be like Paul, where he said, I hadn't shunned the gospel. I've continued to preach the gospel. I've continued to tell you about Jesus. Help us, God, to be that woman, the testimony of continuing to tell people about Jesus, that you might be lifted up. God, we give you praise tonight for your word. And ask you to lead us and guide us and direct us in everything we do. That we would honor you. In Jesus' wonderful and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. I want to encourage you uh, this uh, uh, this week to invite somebody to church with you on Sunday uh, and to continue to pray. Pray for us as we try to uh, figure out leading through uh, where we are uh, as a church and uh, uh, and doing so uh, as safely as possible. Uh, and uh, so continue to pray for that and continue to invite people to the house of the Lord 
Also, you can invite people online. You can, they may not have Facebook or uh, where, where our live services are. We're also on YouTube. Uh, and we also, you can, they can go st- directly to our website, poobieschapel.org, and go straight to all the services that are live streamed without having any kind of Facebook or anything else. They can go straight there or on our app. So please remember that. Share it. Uh, let people know of the word. It's time to stand up as a believer and be bold about who Jesus is because he's coming back amen and uh, we're praise we praise God for his wonderful blessings all right good night God bless you I love you the Lord thank you for being in the house of God we're going to we give him praise tonight and uh, give God honor amen thank you for being in the house of the Lord